everyone, this is Stephen Dempsey. I've covered a lot of the masking options in On One Photo Raw 2018, including most recently the Luminosity Mask. That's a great tool for separating lights from darks and allowing you to make easy selections that would otherwise take hours to do. In some cases, the selections would really be impossible to do by hand. Sometimes when you want to create a mask to separate parts of your photograph, the Luminosity Mask is not the best choice. Let me show you an example. So if I go down here to this photograph I shot in Zion National Park a couple of days ago. Um, so what I want to do here is I want to uh, bring the level of the brightness level of the sky down so that you can see the moon better and uh, it, it just it looks a little blown out to me. So really I just want to select the sky and make that a little darker. Um, and generally speaking when I'm looking at um, you know a bright and uh, dark image um, and I want to separate those two tonal values the luminosity mask is kind of my go-to but it's not a great choice for this particular image and I'll show you why so let's go to uh, develop and I'm going to choose a local adjustment and this is defaulted to uh, minus one in exposure which is fine and I'll bring down the uh, highlights a little bit um, but let's take a look at the mask first um, so if I click on Lumen, which is a luminosity mask, um, and then view it. Uh, so in previous tutorial, I explained that a luminosity mask is essentially just a black and white version of the photograph itself. And uh, that translates then into a map of uh, lights and darks. So um, in this case, the, the lighter area um, would, be, uh, would get a little bit of the effect and the darker areas would get less of the effect. Uh, in areas where it's completely black, it would get no effect because it's, it's, the mask is basically uh, transparent. And where it's pure white, uh, it would get the full effect because it would be full um, opacity, 100% opacity. Um, in this case, uh, there is no strong whites and blacks aside from this guy's shirt and the moon. Um, which is really not helping me. So um, even if I manipulate the level sliders here and bring down the darks, really dark, and bring up the lights, it's not giving me a clean uh, selection on the sky, so it's not really a good, a good uh, choice for this. So um, there is another option in, in the masking area here that's called color range, and that's uh, going to be what we're going to use today. So just going back to viewing the image and... Um, going to select the color range and we are going to go to the uh, color dropper and select the blue. Now uh, let's take a look at the mask. So it's done a pretty good job to start with. Um, so uh, it has selected quite a bit of this uh, blue but it's also selected part of the rocks because there's probably some degree of blue uh, reflection or something in them. So um, this color range slider will determine how much blue in this case um, is, is uh, selected. So the more I go to the left the more pure um, blue in this case uh, is, is uh, selected. Uh, if I go to the right it will expand the selection and I keep expanding it to the point where it is really not selecting blue anymore. So we're going to stay down at this end here. I'm also going to watch the um, sky at the very top left of the image because it is going dark at a certain point right there. So let's just keep the slider there at this point. Now I can go back to the levels and manipulate this further. So just making those blacks or even blacker, although it's not making much of a difference there, but the whites for sure. Um, I can now um, have pure white on the sky, which is exactly what I'm looking for. And um, with the brush that I have selected right now, I can just hit the X key to change it to paint out. And I'll just get rid of these little areas right here. So, and up here at this point, this little hill here was not completely selected. And if, if I'm completely anal about it, I can click on the um, perfect brush and just paint those other little areas out. It may have to go over it a few times. Okay, for this tutorial, this that's good enough. Let's turn that off there. And just get that last little pixel there. Now, so... Everything, uh, if, you've, if you remember the um, tutorials from the past, uh, we say that anything that's black in the mask it means it's transparent and so the effect will not show through. Anywhere where there's white, um, the effect is going to be 100% um, opaque. 
so that means that it's going to be at its strongest at that point so because we've got literally just black and white the sky is selected and the rest of the image is not so let's go back to the view so the settings that I did earlier the minus one on the on the exposure and bringing the highlights down is already applied to that and if we go up to uh, this and turn it on and turn it off and turn it on you can see the difference it's making and it's only choosing the the sky itself which is perfect now you can use this for selecting you know flowers or, or one particular area of an image that has particular colors and you can change the colors or you can make them brighter dark or whatever you want to do with them is fine so another couple of tools inside the uh, masking options is uh, density is one and feather is the other and I use these occasionally for specific uh, reasons and first of all we'll start with the feather so we'll go to the mask view so that you can see what's going on um, when I push the slider to the right it's basically blurring the selection if I push it all the way you can see that it's just it's completely um, it's blobbing it up actually quite a bit and the whole point of this is that it is helping to blend the edges if they become too harsh let's just say that we were seeing a lot of difference uh, a lot of haloing or whatever um, so you know you can push the feathering so that it just kind of blurs those edges so they're not quite as harsh and that works quite a, quite well in most images but in this case it actually uh, doesn't work and let me show you why so if we go back to the image again and if I hit the feather you can see that it's actually creating this really ugly halo so uh, and because the uh, selection is pretty good in this there's no reason to to use the feather but it can work for other uh, applications so just just um, an FYI on that one uh, the other tool is the density tool and basically we'll go back to the mask again uh, what that is is it's like a volume control for the overall mask and um, when we bring it to the left here you can see that it, it basically turns everything gray gray and then goes to white and so it's essentially turning off the mask and as you bring it back up towards the right it's just adding a little bit of intensity so um, what that helps do is it blend, it will help blend the area that you've masked um, with the area that you haven't masked so if things begin to look a little bit too surreal or, or you know you're really drawing attention to the, what you've masked you can um, manipulate this uh, slider to help blend those two areas a little bit better so I, I find it useful in some applications um, it's not necessary in this one though so uh, I'm going to go back to the overall settings and uh, to finish off this image probably add a little bit of warmth there uh, maybe a little bit of contrast that's probably too much um, I also play with the midtones bring up the midtones bring down the shadows or vice versa um, I kind of like where that is right there uh, the only other thing that I'm going to do is add a vignette and I'm going to go up here and uh, do a strong vignette uh, probably make it subtle now it's still coming in on these uh, rocks at the bottom and I don't want to do that so I'm gonna go over to the mask and I'm going to select uh, linear bottom and if you look at the tiny little illustration here you can see the white at the top of this which means that the effect will only be on the top of the image which is what I want and then I'm gonna click somewhere in the middle and so what that did was that basically removed the vignette from the rocks at the bottom and just kept it on the sky which is exactly what I want and so we can click on the mask and you can view that and see exactly what it is so that's uh, that works there so that's pretty much it on this image um, and before I go uh, I do want to give you guys a little tip and uh, for that I'm going to go back to the browse module uh, one of the new things in uh, on one raw on one photo raw is uh, versions and if I go to the grid view here uh, what versions are basically are there virtual copies of your image um, they don't live on your hard drive they only live inside on one photo raw and uh, when you make a, a version of a photograph it, it takes this the current state of that photograph and makes an exact 
duplicate of it. So all the, the exposure things, the mask things that I've done on this, if I create a version, they all carry through in the new version. And that's great for, uh, you know, creating various looks in your image. You can see what a black and white version looks. You can look at the color version. You can see what it looks like with textures on it. And, and you can have all kinds of uh, versions of your photograph um, to see which one appeals to you the most. What I use it for is uh, when I get to a certain point in the edit and I'm really happy with how it looks, but I feel like I want to experiment creatively a little bit more, I will um, but essentially freeze that edit by making a version and then working only on the version and then continuing to, to add the creative changes that I've made. Uh, if I just it goes to the point where I don't like it anymore, I can just literally delete it and I still have my, my edit to the point where I was happy with it. So there's all kinds of ways that you can do this, um, but uh, and it's up to you, but it's a great addition to the program. So that's it. If you've learned something from this tutorial, please like it below. If you like what I'm doing with these tutorials in general, please consider subscribing. Until next time, thanks for watching.